to testify to use that raise hand function. And then, um, then they'd be able to speak, right? Yeah, and then uh, we can have the stenographer, uh, who I see that they're they're uh, they're in as an attendee. Do you, do we make the stenographer a panelist as well? Uh, I don't I don't need to. I mean, they'll see and hear everything that we're seeing and hearing. They just won't be able to talk. Right. Well, yeah, because typically the stenographer. We had traditionally. Well, typically the stenographer would uh, would swear everybody in that's going to testify. Oh, okay. Then I'll uh, I'll make him a panelist. That, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Hey, Don, your uh, hey, your Jeff? microphone's a little funky there. I'm um, kind of wondering if you reposition your laptop somewhere, that might help. Uh, Mark. Gusick, yes, I can see that you are in the room. Yes, I can hear you better now. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Dodson, if you want to tilt your uh, camera down a little bit or move your body up one way or the other. I'm just on the phone. <laughs> so, oh, okay. said, so Jeff's, even though Jeff Johnson is shown as an attendee, he's, he's on basically. Yes, I brought him into the room because uh, he's calling okay. on the phone. So I can't make him a right, full blown right. panelist, but um, right. he will be in the room. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is this everyone and who's uh, coming in today on, on the board? Do we know? Well, we're expecting Selena. Selena should be participating. So she probably just hasn't plugged in yet. Okay. Brian, and then before, I make before we start, I need about 45 seconds to stream it. So what's that, Don? Sorry. I make one other point regarding the court, uh, the stenographer. Um, sometimes, if there's been if there's an exhibit, um, I will ask that the stenographer identify that exhibit as like we'll mark that as exhibit A or B. This way, if there should be uh, an appeal, we'll have a way of referencing it in the transcript. So that I, I would prefer to have audio contact with the stenographer for the reason Jake said, but also for that other reason. Okay, yeah, I brought her in the room, uh, Don, so or him or her, I don't know. It's me, it's Shannon. Uh. Miss, I know, <laughs> Miss, it's all right, I know Mr. Hi, Wagner. Shannon. Hello, I know Mr. Wagner, I'm getting really bad feedback from your microphone. How about now, Shannon, can you hear me? No, it's, still, like a, it's like a scratchy, like yeah. uh, you might have your laptop. Uh, is it actually on your lap? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you find a solid base and go from I will, there? I will try. Thank you. Any difference? You still have it, but we'll see how it goes. Hang, hang on, I'll try something else. If we continue, if we continue to have issues, Ed, or I'm sorry, Don, um, I'll just have you use your video from your laptop and then call in over the phone. Fair enough, but I, I. Um, I'll try to correct it here in the next three minutes, but I do want to occasionally interject that idea. Um, how about now, Shannon? Can you hear me? That sounds better. I'm wondering if I didn't like have my hand over the microphone of my computer. Okay. Um, that's what you were alluding to, Frank. Um, Okay, I see that uh, Alex has a question. He's going to be for the next appeal. Alex, you can probably hear me. <laughs> I see Brian Agresti is here for the first appeal. So we've got representatives for the first two appeals here, I see. Okay, uh, give me a minute so I can go live on social and then um, you guys can 
start your meeting and I'll bring people in and out as you call them in. Okay. Yeah, I've got 1258. So we have a couple minutes to get started. Now, when I swear them in, I won't be able to see them. So it's not going to be a problem. The other thing there, Shannon, is do we do it as a group like we normally do? I think we might have to do it for each individual case. Do the group for each case. That's fine. Because obviously they all won't be online at, at the yeah. beginning. That's fine. I don't know if you can hear me, Mike Orniak, but I just lost everything. It'll be, it might be a second. So okay, Ed, we, um, we are live. Okay, Ed, Ed, do you want to call the meeting to order or do you want me to run through the beginning of the agenda? Um, I'd like to call the City of Erie Zoning Board review uh, for August 11th to order. Do we... Um, Thank you. you. All members present. You, Let's get to members present. Jake. Ed Dawson. Present. John Reitinger is absent. Mike Horniak. Jeff Johnson. Present. Selena King. Present. Thank you. Thank you. We do have four or five members present, uh, we have a, a voting quorum. Mike's, Mike's microphone is off. Okay, mine's working now. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have approval of the minutes from the July 14th, 2020 meeting. Uh, I think all the members had an opportunity to review the minutes from last month. Um, Don, I'm not sure, were we taking motions and, and approval on the minutes? Yes, I, I believe yes. We, we're going to continue to do that. I don't know if we have a motion or just go ahead and okay. approval. Might as well go ahead and somebody can okay. approve for it and second it. All right, I have a motion to approve the minutes. Mike Ornyak. Johnson. Mike Ornyak, second. Properly moved okay. and second. Call for the vote there, Jake. Uh, vote to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Hearing none. Minutes are approved. Hey, Jake, Jeff Johnson yes. here. You might want to mention, because there's four voting members, what happens in a tie? Um, Don, do you want to address that? Um, yes. Uh, for anybody here in the, in the first case or whoever can hear me from the, uh, from the other cases, um, if uh, you still need a majority, uh, 
a tie vote, a two-two vote, um, would be considered a uh, a rejection of the uh, of the request. So uh, even though there's uh, an even number of uh, voting members, uh, you would still need a majority in order for the variance to be approved. Was I coming through okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mike, I just mentioned that to you earlier about your microphone because when you said yay for the roll call, I didn't hear you. That's why I, I just mentioned that. I didn't know if you knew it was off. Okay, next on the agenda, we have appeals to be heard. The first appeal is appeal number 12227 by Brian Agresti. The index number is 4111-108. It's concerning property located at 412 Cherokee Drive. The appellant seeking a dimensional variance to construct the 23 and a half by six foot addition to the existing garage. Per section 205 of the city zoning ordinance, a five foot leased side yard setback and 15 foot total side yard setback is required. A two foot leased side yard and 10 foot total side yard is proposed. I believe Mr. Agresti is here to address the board. Yes, I am. He's an attendee. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to hear me today. Um, Let me just I, try to do it first, sir. Are you, are you able to hear um, me okay? Um, should we swear in all of the witnesses for this case or? Yeah, yeah if you would, um, prior, to, um, prior to starting your presentation, uh, Brian, I would ask that any attendees that are interested in providing testimony for this appeal. Um, use the raise hand function with Zoom uh, and our stenographer will um, swear everybody in who's going to speak. Members gonna testify on the first appeal, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Oh, you two are here. I should, I should look at my Microsoft Office. Okay, Mr. Gresty, you can, can you can begin. Include. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. Um, I've lived at four two five Frontier Drive for the last twenty two years, and my wife and I would like to downsize into a one story home. We came across a foreclosure property at 412 Cherokee Drive that was severely distressed and we would like to completely renovate the home. Uh, it, it suffers from a, a hardship from a standpoint that it has a small one and a half car garage that doesn't accommodate both cars. We would like to expand that garage to a two car garage and we feel it would complement the neighborhood we would improve the value of the property in doing so. We took the time to speak to all the neighboring property owners in the area about the expansion of the garage and laid it out for them. And there is only one property bordering the lot where the garage addition would be constructed and they are for it. And I've included a letter uh, on their behalf to you that should be included in the supplemented materials. So our goal again is just to expand the garage, which we feel will be complementary to the neighboring properties. It will increase the value of the property and it will allow us to stay in the neighborhood that we've been in all these years into a newer one story home, fully renovated. So I'm asking for your consideration to allow us to expand the garage to the end of the driveway, which would be to directly to the north of the property and would abut the neighboring property line, 
with a distance of two feet instead of the six required. Mr. Gresty, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get it. When you were uh, identifying the hardship earlier, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get it all down. Could you please repeat that part earlier? Yeah, the, the, the hardship of the property is that most of the neighboring properties in the area have two car garage. And this particular property has a one car garage. And it prevents the, the valuation of the property being complementary to the other homes in the neighborhood. And it prevents the marketability to certain types of people uh, who need two cars. So the hardship is the fact that it does not have a two car garage like the other neighboring properties. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there anyone, is there anyone else to speak for in favor? No. Anyone else to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed to speak? Anyone opposed to speak? Are we prepared to vote? I'll call for the vote. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Horniak, how do you vote? Well, uh, I know that's a tight properties down there. I went and looked at it and uh, I do notice there's a lot of uh, two car garages. Uh, I don't think it'd be uh, uh, detrimental to the neighborhood. So I approve. That would be a yes. Mr. Johnson, how do you vote? I approve. Ms. King? Yes. We have Mr. Dawson. Yes. We have four yeses and that the appeal is approved. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your time so much. You've made my day. And Brian, I'll, I'll follow up with you afterwards. Um, communicate with you on the next steps. Thank you. You're welcome. Next on the agenda is appeal 1228. Sorry. Jay, can you please give me a moment? Just real quick. I need to make a note. I'll be just a moment. Yes. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, next up on the agenda is appeal number 12-228 by Gary Kanonchek. This is concerning property located at 425 Cherry Street. This is at the corner of 5th and Cherry. The appellant is seeking a dimensional variance to construct a three unit, two story townhouse. Per 205.11 of the city zoning ordinance, the required front yard setback must be the average depth of the existing structures located between two, intersec two intersecting streets, excuse me, plus or minus five feet. The front yard averages are eight feet and five feet respectively. This is a corner lot. Uh, two 20 foot front yards are being proposed. Uh, with that, we have uh, Alex Kanonchek is, is here to speak. Um, can we ask uh, that any of the attendees wishing to provide testimony be sworn in, please? Anyone going to testify, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. This is Gary Kanonchek. Okay, thank you. I believe that covers that. Uh, Gary, if you'd like to begin, uh, go right ahead. You want me to make the announcement about the uh, tie vote, Jake, or did, Gary, did you hear that announcement earlier? I heard it and I understand it. Thank you, Don. Thank you. 
I'll be brief. Um, my, my wife and I, Susan, uh, are in the business of uh, apartment rentals and we having buildings in Northwest Erie. And it's kind of a project we've been working on a long time, probably 10 or 12 years ago. We bought the last building at 560 West 5th, substandard and demoed it. And we bought 425 Cherry prior to that. Uh, my son, who's now in the business, is advocating a little different approach, a little more complete, uh, a little more substantial, a little more attractive, and that is new construction. Uh, that, uh, married with Tenure Lerda, has caused us to uh, do a lot of planning. In this project. And we planned it with the, we believe is the minimum possible uh, uh, zoning uh, change, zoning variance need uh, to do market apartments. Uh, and so we're planning to uh, build a new three unit, uh, add to the income tax base. Um, most, most of our tenants would be paying that, uh, you know, if, you know. Probably more so, of course, post tenure, tenure Lerda. Uh, we do own the properties to the east and to the west, uh, which, if you have or want to take a take a ride by, they're uh, at least reasonably well maintained. Uh, we're not aware of any uh, uh, neighborhood issues of objections, but perhaps we'll find out in a few minutes. But we're not aware of any. Uh, so. All right. That complied with both the average setbacks as Jake to find them uh, and the 20-foot uh, garage setback. But that's all I have. Thank you. Is there anyone else in favor? Is there anyone else in favor? Is there anyone opposed? Is there anyone else opposed? All right, we'd like to hear from the members of the board. Um, I do have a question, Mr. Chair. Um, the porch that you're proposing on the second floor, um, this would probably be for Jake. Are those the um, dimensions that are allowable for our code? Because it's hard to see the rest of the print that's there. Um, oh, 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 oh! Uh, that would that be uh, would that be the uh, uh, one time porch that's. Uh, um, to the east of the garage? Um, it would be to the east of a bedroom. It's on the second floor plan. Yeah, yeah that is yes. that final. Uh, that would not have met the pure requirements for townhouse being, I don't know if you can see me, up and down. And uh, so that is not part of the final plan. OK, so. There is no post anymore. That's why I was momentarily confused. Okay, so you're removing the porch from the second floor. Yes, there would be uh, okay. uh, porches in that area uh, as we speak today. Okay. All right, that was my only question. I have one question, uh, Gary. Um, I believe I heard you say that you own the properties to the east and the west of this lot. Um, and I also thought I understood you to say that your son was purchasing or, or doing the renovation on this property. Um, is there going to be any inconsistencies in the in the deeds and the ownership? Uh, just looking forward, any potential conflicts in the future, or will the deeds be consistent? Uh, oh, yeah, the, uh, ownership. Well, I I in part I didn't hear all your. I'm sorry, I didn't want to make it too back to my own complicated. I just, I'm sorry, I just want to make it too I just wanted to confirm if you own the houses that to, on both sides and yeah, whether they would all be deeded the same, you know, show yeah. the same owner we, or we, if there be a potential Susan, problem in the future. Good point. Susan and I own the one to the east, and Susan and I own the one to the west. And my son is actually involved in the business. He is not a, a deed owner at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, Gary. It's Jeff Johnson. How are you? Pretty good, Jeff. But Gary, I know you've invested in that area uh, down there. 
where the subject is. How many units do you own totally down in that uh, Cherry Street, 4th Street, 5th Street area? Well, I happen to know the number. I, I, I'm not a person who concentrates on units and you know the biggest unit count. We're way more interested in uh, quality and uh, that type of thing. But I, since I just finished it for the bank, my rent roll, it's, it's 54. Okay. So you, you, you got quite an investment in that area is what I'm driving at. See, uh, it's a really big investment for us. And 25 years ago, when we first started, it was really uh, you know, swimming against the grain, to say the least. Yep, but gotcha. now uh, it's, there's so much positive. I could talk forever, but you all know about uh, a lot of them. And you certainly know the really, really big ones uh, happening on West 6th Street. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I commend you on your investment in the city of Erie. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Having no other comments, Jake will call for the vote. Okay. Um, Mr. Horniak, how do you vote? I vote yes. Mr. Johnson? Approve. Ms. King? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Yes, we have four yes votes. The appeal is approved. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're uh, kind of good to go. We're, we've got uh, some contractors selected and a plan and uh, we're uh, got a lot of t utility conversations and we'll keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. All right, we'll call for the next. Next up on the agenda is Appeal 12-229 by PE Real Estate Holdings, LLC. This is concerning property located at 946 West 2nd Street. The appellant is seeking a dimensional variance to construct a 13-unit, three-story, multiple-family dwelling Per section 20511 of the city zoning ordinance, the required front yard setback must be the average depth of the existing structures located between two intersecting streets, plus or minus five feet. The front yard average is seven and a half feet. 148 feet is proposed. Per section 205.24 of the ordinance, each side yard shall be increased by three feet per story above the second story. Two six, yard, six foot side yards are required. Two three foot side yards are proposed. Uh, we, we do have a couple people I, I know that are going to be interested in providing testimony. Um, Philip Jesue and Brian Weber, I do believe. Um, with that, I would ask that any people provide, wanting to provide testimony uh, use the raise hand function so you can be sworn in. Anybody who plans on testifying, raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. All right, proceed. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I'd like your name to, and address, please. Uh, my name is Philip Jesuway. I am a representative of PE Real Estate Holdings. My address is 1 Worth Street, New York, New York. Uh, our firm does um, uh, small to medium sized multifamily development projects um, in New York and other parts of the United States. I am originally from Erie, PA. I have a extensive family that lives in Erie and um, interested in um, 
getting involved in development in the city and trying to bring some uh, new and exciting projects to what I think is a very um, exciting up and coming old neighborhood. And uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to an opportunity to develop something in this neighborhood. Um, I am asking for a variance today because the um, lot that I have in question here, 946 Second Street, is a through lot. It goes all the way from Second Street through to the bank that faces the Erie Bay. And so, um, in a sense, it essentially has two frontages. Um, it has a frontage um, on the lake side and it has a frontage on the Second Street side. Um, it is not economically feasible today um, to develop new construction um, rental housing that does not have any views of the bay. The rental comps um, that I have seen in the market are not high enough to adjust the new cost of construction um, on these lots without um, ensuring that a large um, percentage of the units on the site have some um, uh, a glimpse of the of the bay, and that really is what this neighborhood um, uh, has as its main asset, and I think it's what attracts a lot of people to the downtown area and to Erie in particular. Um, this lot happens to be 270 feet deep and 50 feet wide, so it's an extraordinarily deep site, and it's a uh, for something that deep, a very, very narrow site. In order to be able to um, build what the zoning permits on the site, uh, or even close to it, um, one would need to do a very deep and skinny building. And the city's um, front yard and side yard setbacks make that nearly impossible to take advantage of um, for two different reasons. Um, if this building is forced to front on 2nd Street, which is um, not a natural frontage for the building, um, it would have its views of the lake eclipsed by the edge of the cliff because it sits so far back. Um, so I'm asking for a relaxation of the front yard setback that would essentially let this front at the other end of the lot um, and that happens to be a customary condition for this block. Um, a number of the, of the buildings further down the block front on Front Street and have their frontages facing the bay just as, as I'm proposing here. Secondarily, because this lot is so narrow at only 51 feet wide, to the city's um, side yard zoning in this district is three feet for the first two stories and an additional three feet for every story after that. So on a 51 foot wide lot, um, the, first two, the first three feet for the first two stories is very easy to accommodate. It, it makes the lot uh, after that 45 feet wide, uh, three feet on each side. But once it turns into a third story, there's another three feet on both sides that needs to be taken off and it now becomes a 40 foot building. And, and if there were a fourth story that would go on, it would become a 39 foot building and so on and so forth. And um, it, what happens is in this zoning district where we have very narrow deep lots, um, the side yard setback essentially makes, makes you either have to do an extremely tall building, which is not in the best interest of the neighbors, but, you know, and in many instances, the developer, um, or, or you simply can't uh, take advantage of any of the density in the neighborhood. So what I'm asking is a relaxation on the third floor setback. And as a mitigation, I am putting a sloped roof on this, which would start about two thirds of the way up that setback, um, which would in effect give light and air um, to both sides of the building that would be equivalent or greater than a, a ground floor setback. Um, uh, because of the, if, you know, if this had a square, otherwise had a square roof on it. Um, and what this enables me to do is to have three units wide facing the lake. So in 46 or 45 feet, I can fit three, 40, three 15 foot wide units. If this were to go down another six feet, um, they would be too narrow to fit three and I could only fit two. 
and I wouldn't have water views for roughly um, a third, uh, two thirds of the unit in the development, and it would not be economically feasible to develop. Um, furthermore, because um, this area many years ago was the location of Front Street, and Front Street was a um, uh, uh, previously um, mapped street that ran through the property, there is some historical context for this fronting at the other end of the lot um, instead of Second Street. And that, that is a summary of my request. Is there anyone else in favor to testify? I am. State your name and address. Brian Weber, Weber Murphy Fox, 30 Westlake Road, APA. Um, so I, I, I'm in favor of this project working with Philip. Uh, Excuse me. Thomas. Hold on. Excuse me. Please speak into yes. the microphone. You're breaking up. I cannot understand you. All right. I'll try to speak louder. Is this better? Okay. We'll try. So my name again was Brian Weber with Weber Murphy Fox Architects, 3230 West Lake Road, Erie, PA. Well, I'm gonna tell you, get you a text. I need And we're working with Philip on this. I don't believe I have uh, much more to add to this other than emphasizing some of the points that Philip already made um, with uh, the hardship that was created uh, by the change in zoning when the front street was removed um, created a, a very long, narrow lot that is just not economical to develop. Um, I believe that front street was removed when the Bayfront Parkway was developed. Moving the front street further to the east and eliminating the frontage that was historically with this lot. I think other than that, um, you know, I, I, again, the side yard setbacks for such a narrow lot make it difficult to develop, uh, just in, unfeasible for a developer. And, you know, although this doesn't have much bearing to this, this lot has been brought in front of this group previously, and there have been historic uh, variances made in the past um, to help get this lot developed. Um, for reasons, one reason or another, those previous developers uh, did not move forward with their projects. That's all. Anyone else in favor? Anyone else in favor? To testify. Can I ask one question of Mr. Weber? And Jake, you may be able to answer this. Um, just for my report, when was that? Um, when was the code changed uh, making Front Street uh, changing the setbacks as a result of the uh, construction of the Bayfront Highway? So what year that was? So I put it in the report. It's not vital. I would just like, I'm kind of curious. You're on mute. I can try to look it up. Don't, that's all right. Don't worry about it. He's muted. Okay. Jake was muted. Okay, we're back again. Anyone else in favor? Uh, Anyone else in favor? Yeah, I, be I believe Mark Gusick wanted to speak. Yes, can you hear me? Mark, state your name yes. and give your address. Mark Gusick, G U S E K. And uh, my address would be, uh, for this particular uh, scenario, would be 946 West 2nd. Proceed. Uh, I'm the current owner of the property. Uh, I, I bought that property with the hopes to build a, uh, build a retirement home for myself there. Unfortunately, some plans, plans have changed for me. And uh, I, I think it's pretty exciting to get a... Uh, developer of Mr. Guise's um, uh, experience up here to reinvest his money into Erie, uh, being that it would 
he has some pretty deep roots here to bring some New Jersey, New York money up here to proceed with a, a great development that uh, is going to put in some, uh, you know, medium to higher end uh, rental uh, places. And uh, I'm glad to see that view is going to be taken, uh, taken care of uh, very well. Uh, that was the view I wanted, but uh, some things changed. So uh, I'm in favor of this uh, property uh, zoning change. I, I think it's also important to note too that um, prior to selling this property, I did offer it to the neighbor and the neighbor didn't have any interest in it. Um, uh, so I, I, did, uh, I did give him a first right of refusal. That's all I have. Questions for Mr. For Mark Gusick. Uh, Jeff Johnson, I have a question. The uh, BE Real Estate Holdings, comma, LLC, for transparency purposes, is Kathy Dahlkamper part owner in that LLC? No. I own okay. all of it. Okay. I had a question for Mark, for Mark. Was it a couple of years ago you came into the zoning and requested a zoning change? Yes, uh, that's that's correct, Mr. Dawson. That was me. Uh, the zoning change that I requested was uh, well, it was essentially half of what uh, Mr. Guys is asking. We uh, we wanted to move the front of the house closer to the bluff in, in order to enjoy the view. Uh, a question for Phil: How many how many units? Thirteen. Thirteen units. Yes. Okay. And that was Mr. Gessio that answered that. 13 yes. It, yes, it was. Units. Thank you. I've asked for all in favor, all in favor to speak. Those who are opposed have the same option. Those who are opposed have the same option. Uh, questions from the board members. I have a further transparency, transparency question. Is Kathy Dahlkemper part of the group developing this property? No, I I don't know I don't know Kathy Dal Dalkemper. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions? It does appear that we had there are a couple of attendees who'd like to speak. Can they speak up? Yes, my name is Brian Agresti. I spoke to you a little earlier. Um, I am the owner of Agresti Real Estate. We, we represent the sale of this property. And uh, I've lived at 425 Frontier for the last 22 years. This is a neighborhood that I've always loved. I love the bluff. I used to have a boat below. I love walking it. I love everything about it. And I am so excited to see some development finally happening in this area. Uh, where we've had a lot of rundown structures that just don't seem to change. And I just wanted to say I support this. I feel no. that this is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for the city. And it will only create more development, which the Bayfront is the heart of our community. And, and when you're riding on that Bayfront Highway or somewhere down along the water to look up on the hill, and see new construction, I think is a positive thing for our area. Thank you for your time. Are there others in favor? Jake, I thought you said you saw three hands. 
Uh, we have, um, there are a couple of other hands. I think they've been brought in. Uh, they're able to speak. I don't know if they're speaking in favor or not. Susan Day is asking to speak. Susan, are you for or in favor of the project? She's Susan, muted. You're, you're muted. Oh, there's some confusion here. Is Brian still on? Yes, you are. Okay, Brian Agresti is still on? Yes. Okay, Brian, this is not the property we are representing. Okay, let's try that one again. I'm so sorry. There's a confusion. Philip just say is is um, presenting two different properties, and this is not the one that we're representing Philip Jesu on. I am still in favor of this. Okay. All right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Anyone? Anyone opposed? You're on mute. Hello. Mr. Dawson, you're on mute. Okay, I'm off. Is anyone opposed? I have a question. Okay. State your name so, and give your address. My name is Daria Daria Marella, and I live at 230 Liberty. So and I have a question for the developer about this property. They, this is this is close to where the um, Laura Waller Street Apartments is. Is that correct? Hold on, you got back. You got some background feed, and I cannot understand you. Which development? Apartment. I, I know. I have real ba background noise, and I don't know how to get rid of it. Gloria, this is uh, Frank. I'm running, uh, and I'm going to ask you to turn your volume down on your phone. What's happening is the Zoom volume from the meeting is coming into your microphone, and that's creating the feedback. Okay, it's not on my phone. Is that better? Is that better? I'll try it. We'll try it, yeah. Okay, so are we looking at the property that's closest to the Laura Wallerstein apartments? Yes. Okay, and well, where's the parking? Phil? The parking is uh, surface level parking between the front of the building and Second Street, and that surface level parking. I'm sorry, I, I that was quiet and quick. I couldn't hear it. Uh, so there will be uh, surface level parking that will be between the rear of the property and Second Street, and that will have um, screening around it pursuant to the zoning code. Uh, both the waterfront zoning code and the city's um, landscape code. So it will be private parking? Yes, it will. Okay, thank and you. It, it's, and it's parking that will be pursuant to code. So uh, there is one parking space per unit that's required and uh, that's what's being, actually, I think we have one extra uh, handicap space. So we're saying only one parking place per unit. That is correct. That's what that's the zone. That is the code. So do you realize that um, the parking on Second Street or then on the bluff could be compromised? Uh, I'm following the code required parking and in my experience um, in both suburban and urban markets, one space per unit is the, 20 years ago, it, it, it would, would not have been enough. Today, it's probably too much. Um, we're finding a lot of people, especially in urban locations close to um, employment centers, actually don't have cars. And I know it's Erie, and I know Erie is a very spread out city, but we're finding that um, 
in very few locations is there more than one car per unit um, parking. You know, Houston, Texas, we see it, some other really spread out markets, but we're really seeing smaller um, parking counts year after year after year. So one unit per space, um, to be honest with you, seems like it should be um, appropriate for this number of units. And we're providing that plus we're providing handicap. Because if you do live here, you would see odd even parking days. There are probably at least 15 cars on one side of a city block. Most people have two family homes, car, I mean, two family cars. I think Brian Agresti referred to that by having a two car garage. So it's, it's kind of the same situation most families have two cars well, a single, two people a are working. Family, i'm sorry a, a single family home has a very different parking ratio than a multi-family park apartment and diff, very different use user ratios and again i apologize i can't hear you um, so multifamily properties, so apartment properties, have a very different um, car usage than single family homes. Um, single family homes tend to be, um, have families living in them and have more established, um, older, more affluent residents, and they tend to have more cars. And uh, in multifamily environment, we tend to see a, lar a lower parking ratio. I mean, I think one of the reasons you may have cars on the street in this neighborhood is that there are a number of um, properties that have multiple units that have little or no parking. And I think that um, we're not doing that. We're providing at least one parking space per unit, but I, I uh, would venture to guess that that is not um, the average um, in the rest of the rental properties in the neighborhood. And are these low income properties or income based properties? They are um, open market, free, what we call uh, free market properties. So they're open to everybody. So they would also be open in section eight, any type of they could be, but that's not what our plan is. Our plan is to do um, a higher end rental here and to um, maximize the views. And uh, we've tried to do something that's architecturally significant um, using an award-winning architect from, um, from Jersey City and New York City. And um, so, you know, we wanna try to do something that complements the neighborhood and is maybe a little bit more interesting. and. Um, maybe is a place that, you know, a professional who might otherwise have gone to, you know, Mill Creek or the suburbs might make a decision to come downtown and, um, you know, get an interesting architectural place and a view of the lake. And that's the, that's the proposition. Okay. And that, you know, that sounds good. I'm <laughs> waiting, I'm waiting for the next property on in the 800 block, I guess, too. Okay. If I could interject with a thought as well, um, Daria, you know, I think, I think you bring up some, some good points as far as parking. One of the things that, that Philip is doing with this development is he's providing interior bike parking um, and encouraging uh, alternate means of transportation uh, that will also help lessen um, the stress on the parking. Um, and what type of transportation would that be? Well, what I was talking about is the bike, the interior bike parking. So you, he's providing space inside the ground floor of this development for people to be able to bring their bicycles inside and have protected covers with easy access to the streets and sidewalks. So, um, you know, he's not, not outdoor bike parking. It's, it's not forcing people to put their bikes up in their, in their lot. So, um, by providing that additional bike parking, which is unique uh, for apartments, uh, especially in the city, uh, it helps um, encourage people to use that as an alternate form of transportation. Okay, thanks, Brian. I have a question. Um, Jake, uh, Mr. Gissus says that it, he'd like the address to be the front, front street versus second street. 
Is is that something that the board should address? Where the front yard actually rests at? No, I mean the addressing for the property essentially won't change. Okay, which means the front yard is the front yard. The front yard is front yard. actually Second Street. At, yes, at, at this point, yeah, the, yep. the front yard is technically Second Street because at some point in time, uh, and I don't remember exactly when, but Front Street was considered uh, a public right of way, a city right of way. And I think when the Bayfront Highway was being developed and ownership records were being researched, ultimately the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania took over or uh, you know, was granted ownership of that bluff area, which was then transferred to the Port Authority, which is how it currently lies. So at some, at, you know, previously, and that's why you have homes on that block that have frontage only on that front street side and not on second street, because it was previously considered a uh, public right of way. And it still is publicly, it's still maintained by the city is my understanding. The street is still maintained by the city, even though the Port Authority actually owns the property now. Thank you. Are there any 13 unit facilities in that area? 10 uh, or better. Is that a question for me? Yes, sir. <laughs> Off the top of my head, uh, as far as doing counts of units, I mean, there are, there are several uh, condominium type developments that obviously have multiple units. Uh, the exact number of units, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. On one space of land though. Those are multiple, uh, yes, correct. multiple spaces of land down there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gissu, have you considered a smaller number of units for that property? Is why 13? Uh, if I consider 13 units because the economics of developing rental housing in Erie are not, um, they, they, it's not ec economically justified today. And um, that's why there are no new rental properties in that neighborhood because it's probably not economically feasible to do it. It's extremely costly to build in Erie. Um, to give you a sense, it costs as much to build in Erie as it does in Jersey City. And our rents in Jersey City are between 40 and $50 a square foot a year. And in Erie, the rents are between 12 and $18 a year. So it's, it's so uh, difficult to justify the cost of new construction from the ground up that um, I believe that you need to maximize the density on the lot to make the units as economically, uh, first of all, to make the construction as inexpensive as possible and to get as much benefit as you can from the value of each additional income producing unit so that you can cover your construction costs. But this is a property where at the end of the day, um, I hope to be able to deliver it for $150 a square foot and people are telling me it's a hundred, it's a 175 or $200 a square foot. And those numbers are not uh, feasible with the city's rental market. So um, I think that the good thing about this neighborhood, whoever had the foresight to increase the density, did two things. Number one, they increased the chance that someday development would come to this neighborhood, real development, you know, not just one off or two off, but real development. And number two, they, um, by increasing the density, you put more people on the street. And what's good, and I, I'm, I'm involved in development all across the United States. And I can tell you that vacant lots are terrible for neighborhoods. They provide um, discontinuity in terms of neighbors. Um, and when you have an urban area, you need more density because you need people to go down to that corner store. You need people to get a job downtown and to ride their bikes there. You need people in the neighborhood who are invested and form a sense of community. 
And when I go into the West Bayfront neighborhood today, there's a fabulous community, but it's pockmarked with vacant lots all over the place. And so I think that the, that the density is an opportunity to be an economic driver to um, uh, create economics that gets these things developed, number one. And the byproduct is actually a fabulous thing. It's more people to fill up your city and provide a tax base and to create a community of people to buy stuff and do stuff. That was a long-winded philosophical answer, <laughs> but I, I wanted to give you I wanted to give you both both the, the basic economic angle and the I think the part that you're looking at. Yep. Can I add a, a layman's observation to that? Uh, some of the structures that, that would be uh, high density, uh, like dormitories, would be temporary in nature, like people staying one maybe two years and wouldn't have the long-term commitment like the kind of uh, development you were describing. I, I just thought of that as you were making your remarks. Well, uh, so, uh, uh, you're saying that in, that in this project in particular? No, I, in general, I'm saying, it, I'm just uh, commenting on your comments that, that uh, the, uh, the, the dense, the projects that uh, have dense with the density <clears throat> um, enhance the uh, enhance the neighborhood uh, develops economic uh, uh, you know it, de it develops it develops an economic base. What I was pointing out was that those few uh, existing um, structures with high density would be like dormitories where people would not have a long-term commitment. Where, unlike what you're proposing where uh, the people buying the apartment or whatever would have a long-term commitment. It was just an observation I had. I didn't mean to make it more, yeah. more complicated than... Yeah, these will be long. To, these will be long-term residents. Right. These will that's be, what I was... Yeah, these will be luxury rentals. And today, you know, young people rent more than they buy, and they rent as a lifestyle choice, not as an economic, um, uh, you know, causation. So at the end of the day, there's lots of young people who just decide they'd rather um, save their equity for a home and travel and 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 rent long-term. So that's what I anticipate these these will be occupied by. And maybe older people as well. There's a lot of older people who are ready to sell their home and travel more and not have, uh, not have to mow a front yard, but you know, they don't necessarily want a condo. Dick, there are the persons I believe have questions. Uh, yes, I believe so. I think Mark uh, Gusek wanted to make a comment as well as a couple of other Attendees, Karen Shalinsky, also had her hand raised. Uh, Mark and Karen, you're muted. Hello? Yes. Would you, you state your name? And you, please you give me your address. Yes. Oh. Karen Shalinsky. My address is 947 West 2nd Street. That would be the property directly across the street. I'm sorry, excuse me, Mr. Chair, have all of these people been sworn in that are now speaking? Because we only had a few swear in in the very beginning. Now we have new voices. Okay, I, I thought the uh, recorder asked that all persons who were going to testify. Um, maybe we missed them at that point. Yeah, I think, well, some people are just now saying they want to speak and we're not sworn in. All right. Court stenographer, could you swear in all persons who either for or against, uh, please be sworn in. Anybody who's going to testify, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I was sworn in before. Okay. Proceed, please. 
Karen, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I own the property across the street, 947 West 2nd Street. And I guess I had some similar concerns about traffic and parking. It's already a, a fairly congested, narrow street. And um, I guess I was just wondering if uh, it would be a problem, especially with the odd even parking and winter parking. And I have a big driveway, but uh, it's often blocked. There seems to be a lot of uh, parking on that street. That's a concern you have. Yes. Okay. Hi, this, this, this is Mark Usak. Um, I just want to echo uh, Mr. Geis's um, uh, comment about uh, the expense to build in, in Erie. Um, we certainly have, uh, with, uh, with the business that I run, we certainly uh, are sensitive to those building issues. But I can also tell you that was the, the budget uh, that I had for my, uh, the house that I wanted to build on there. That's one of the main reasons that I had to turn away from it. It was just getting too expensive for uh, myself to do that. And um, having somebody come in with Mr. Guys' ability to um, capitalize on some economies of scale to uh, give some, uh, some, some, nice, um, some nice views again, I, I'm just going to tell you, he, he, you know, he doesn't know this yet, but I may be reaching out to him later to rent one of those when I sell my house in Mill Creek um, to get that view that I wanted. Uh, the other thing is, um, I mean, think about what's going on down in, in down in Erie with uh, that that office building that hopefully uh, Mr. Nicastro is going to be able to open after COVID. That you're going to have a lot of um, single folks working at Erie Insurance, and, and this is going to be pretty darn convenient for those Erie Insurance folks down there to have units that are going to be of this quality to be able to live in and uh, live down on that waterfront. Uh, as far as the parking issue, because I've, I've had to deal with that parking issue there myself, um, it, it appears to me that most of the parking issue uh, derives from the um, staff and the employees from time to time uh, at that um, uh, brain trauma uh, place that's on the corner there. Um, they, they seem to be uh, working on the street quite a bit. Um, but uh, having the parking that Mr. Guys has in, similar to the parking for all of those apartment units that are at 946, they have off street parking and there's not really a, a parking issue. So having off-street parking, I think, is going to be a, a huge benefit to making this project a success. Are there other persons who choose to speak for, in favor or against? You need to unmute yourself if you have any questions. So I have another question. All right. Um, again, what we're looking at is changing the, the um, neighborhood dynamic by bringing in, and I'm talking about both units. I know we're discussing one of the 900 block right now, but we're talking about changing the whole structure of a neighborhood that right now has remained pretty quiet. Um, recently, they put a bus line on Liberty, where I live. That's changed the noise better. Um, we also have a problem with the speeding, the five o'clock traffic. I reached out to the Erie Police Department actually three times this week, received no response. So we're, what I see is that everything here is rental. Um, those of us who own our homes, we appreciate, obviously, um, Mr. Guzik, your effort. But to have people moving in and out and having the congestion of so many units does change the um, environment that we live in. And you're asking for height variances. 
that changes again the environment that we live in. I think if you were to build something smaller, not changing the height variance, I don't know why there has to be 13 units, nine maybe. And and I think that would be sufficient for most for both properties. And I know we haven't gotten to the other one yet, but we are already surrounded by so many rental properties. The only ones that I can say so far that have been successful that we haven't had problems with are the ones next to the Laura Walsh apartments and at the foot of Liberty. Um, Paul Berger used to own those. And I'm not sure who owns the others. But 13 is a lot of units. I, I would downside that and I think I would feel better. But 13 is a lot of units. Mr. Geshe, do you have a response? Um, I, I don't. I, I think. OK. Um, I OK. Don't. Very good. Um, board members, is there any questions, concerns? Am I being heard? I'm not sure. I hear you. Good. You hear on me. Good. Okay. I can hear you. Are we prepared for the vote? Hey, Ed, yeah. I have a question. Thank you. Has there is there has there ever been anything built on that property and then it was raised? Jake? I believe there was a dwelling there at one point in time. I don't know how long ago that was. You think a single family dwelling? There was a single family I, dwelling. Okay. I think so. Thank you. Yes. Jake, there's a person. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I guess. Go ahead. I did raise my hand again. I don't know how well that's working. And this is Mark. I can help Jake answer that question. There, there was a structure there prior that was that was torn down by the owner that had it prior to me, because the owner that had it prior to me was going to build four buildings of two units apiece that. I believe the planning commission and the zoning commission back then, probably about seven years ago, um, uh, approved. So there, there were actually going to be on this particular property, um, one, two, three, four, um, two unit buildings on there uh, that really didn't look all that good and give the nice views that this kind of thing is going to give. And um, that was done by, I can't remember who I actually, I bought it out of the estate from the person, but that's, that doesn't matter. But there was a, there was a development plan for this area that was previously approved. All right. Okay, my question for Jake. Jake, is that a true statement? Yep, my understanding is that there there was a dwelling previously there. I I'm yeah, but I mean he's saying that the planning commission or maybe the zoning board approved something there previous. Is that true? Uh, yeah, a variance was previously approved for Mr. Dusek's development. Single in 2017. Hello. And what was his uh, what was his variance approved for? Single family. Correct. All right. Can but I? Hello? One more question. But there was no approval from the planning commission or the zoning board for multiple units on this property. 
Yes, there was. Karen, wasn't that G. Shimmick's property? Um, Jeff Galt? Uh, yes, that was Jeff Galt's oh, property. It was Jeff Galt's property. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. I want, it, I, I want you to Jeff first. Galt's way. So we have some order here. If you want to speak up, would you let us know who's speaking so we can acknowledge you? Yes, Karen Shalinsky. Okay. Yes, uh, my great grandfather owned that land from the 1800s to about the 1940s, and the house that was raised a few years ago ha was built by him. So it was a single family home way back then. Okay. There are several other persons out. If you choose to speak, you need to speak up now. Please say your name first. Just Sorry, check. Hold on. Try it again. Sorry, Marinella. I'm getting Did somebody. Did you get that? I apologize. Okay. Please state your name and address. Daria Marnella, 230 Liberty Street. Okay. Again, I, I think maybe we need to see the plans or have a little bit more input on how many units because it does directly impact the traffic and the neighborhood. And I am very involved and I have been very involved in the Bayfront area, east and west side. And I see what they're doing with the properties on the east side that their insurance is developing. There is nothing that looks like this, a 13 unit complex. I just think the size is not conducive to what type of neighborhood we want to keep moving forward. I would like to see younger people attracted to the community. And you know what? Buy my house, actually, um, in about the next five years. <laughs> but I, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm getting old. Um, I, I think 13 units is too many. And I think it needs a little more consideration. And I know like, we can't sit and see the plans. But I just don't think it's something that's bettering the neighborhood. 13 units with 13 parking spaces. That's just a lot. Okay. Anyone else to speak? Yes. Chuck Nelson, 646 West 9th Street. Uh, I'm looking at this and then, you know, just down the block, we're also looking at 12 units. So the, the complaints are generally the same. You know, there's, there's, I understand the variance to change basically the frontage from second street to front street. And that seems to make a lot of sense, but to go to do much of anything to offer variances, to make this uh, more accessible, I think goes against a lot of the things that the city has been emphasizing lately uh, within the comprehensive plan. One of the biggest pillars is right sizing in particular, the housing stock in comparison to a declining population and then making an emphasis on vibrant bayfronts and owner occupancy. This is apparently a lot that's been single family before. The previous owner that's in on this call had talked about making it a single family house with a beautiful view. It would seem to fit the culture and the community oh. to have it be a single family house. And as part of the mayor's activating vision plan, the goal was to have 20 new single family houses built in the near future. Um, you know, I think, I think especially during this time of Lerda, which is driving so many people to invest in building, that we don't necessarily have to have a rush since we're not going to see the benefits of this financially as a city for 10 years to push somebody in that is bringing 13 units into a single unit um, area that already has a little bit of industry that is p taking up any extra street parking. Uh, this isn't something where we need to rush to make exceptions for 25 units to go into a two block area. Thank you. I'd like to support 
Mr. Nelson's point of view. My Ms. name is Alexander. Before you continue, would you state your name and where you live? My name is Leslie Alexander. I live at 820 West 2nd Street. I support Mr. Nelson's point of view. It seems that the developer wants to complement the neighborhood and actually our neighborhood is impoverished with high rates of unemployment, um, low income housing. Uh, the majority of occupants are moving frequently um, and to introduce 13 units on a really very tight bend in the road where many people have already identified issues associated with parking um, is not in keeping with the atmosphere of the community, the West Bayfront community as it stands and the aspirations to go forward. I'd also like to draw attention since it was mentioned that the apartments at the bottom of Liberty also um, had a number of parking spaces. They also have garages and many of the cars found outside that apartment complex are too deep. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to clarify something. This is Mark Gusak. Before you go further, Mark, um, Ms. Alexander, have you been sworn in? Yes, I was sworn in. Thank you. Thanks okay. for asking. And there are a couple people that are still, uh, <sighs> you need to unmute yourself. So you, if you say who you are, then we can acknowledge you. So This, this is Carrie D. Church. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much. I live at 108 Plum Street. I've lived here over 20 years in a, a own my house. And just to support that, I take that route to work pretty much every day. On the days when there is no um, one side parking, you know, alternate parking, there's oftentimes you can't, it, it becomes a one laden road right now to where you can't even get through. Additionally, um, there is a large parking lot for the Laura Wallerstein apartment, so that is not occupied by workers there at that facility. The paraplegic people, the paraplegic people um, that use, they're in wheelchairs often are on the streets. They don't use the sidewalks. So my concern is if a car can't get through, and a good uh, representation is on a Tuesday night with a great Tuesdays, that parking down there, it becomes a bottleneck. People coming down um, the street and people going across West 2nd Street often can't get through because it's a one lane. And then you add a wheelchair with a paraplegic in, in those in that street. This, this, and to naively think that one, one car per unit is, is adequate, I, I just don't think we're being realistic here. And that is all I have to say, thank you. Anyone else to speak? Please say your name so I may acknowledge you and then proceed. Mark Gusak. Proceed. Yeah, I wanna clarify something that the gentleman uh, mentioned, uh, the, the gentleman that spoke two, two uh, spots before. Um, first, uh, yes, I was planning to build a single family home, but I want him to realize the exact reason, one of the reasons that I didn't do that is because the cost to build. So it's not gonna change for anybody else uh, unless you could get some economies of scale to do what developers do and have those kinds of contacts rather than just some guy that wants to build a house. It isn't gonna happen. Number two is um, it, I, I just emailed to Jake a copy of what was uh, proposed and approved by um, the guy that owned it before me. Um, what was his name again? Um, the developer that owned it before me. Um, he had this approved, which was multiple buildings with multiple, um, uh, multiple um, tenants in it. And uh, as far as uh, I, I do have to disagree with the lady that just spoke, I can tell you for a fact that the staff of the uh, complex next to this is parking in that street. 
I've had to go over there multiple times to get them to move out of my driveway and be able to snow blow and snow plow um, the, um, the uh, curb cut. And so it, it is a problem, but it's a problem that can be worked with. They're, they've been a good neighbor. Uh, the maintenance people over there always said, if there's any problem, come on over. And nobody's ever squawked about moving their place. I've even allowed them to park when they've had uh, some events there. I've allowed them to, to use my property. So there's, there, there is a neighborhood there and the neighborhood works together. Um, I took down their trees for them so that we can clear that lot to make it look nicer. So there's, um, there is a neighborhood there and the neighborhood of uh, having uh, 17 units or 13 units, whatever it is, um, you got to start somewhere and it makes a great anchor at the west end of this street to start that process of rebuilding. Okay, if there's no one else to bring up any additional points, do you have any if things have already been said that you have a concern about, we will take that in consideration. I would, I would like to, he'd mention, he mentioned in response to Excuse something. Excuse me for I'd a say. second. When I acknowledge you, you can speak. Now, who is it that'd like to speak? Chuck Nelson, West 9th Street. Okay. He had pointed out how it's not economically feasible to build a single family house there in his uh, individual experience. I think that this needs to be considered is that the city's emphasis through the comprehensive plan and the emphasis put on the Bayfront, that it is going to continue to be more economically feasible. If you get on Zillow or any of those general real estate websites and look at what's happening to house values in the West Bayfront community right now, you're going to see some of the best growth in our region. On the 500 block of West 9th Street, there was just a 2,000 square foot house that got a contract for 165000 on it. There's no reason to think that a house with a view on that bluff couldn't pull in a nice, a nice valuation that would leave the city less dependent on needing to put in a 13 unit complex owned by a firm in Jersey City. The, the settings are changing in this neighborhood where the anchors don't necessarily need to be 13 and 12 unit settings, but we may see owner occupied single family units as anchors to our community instead of rental properties from out of town developers. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak? Board, I asked, do you have any other questions for? Do you have any other questions? Are we prepared to vote? I'm ready. Okay. Jake, call for the vote. Is there a problem? Mr. Horniak, how do you vote? Well, I'm, uh, I'm between a rock and a hard place here because I think, uh, I think development is good for the, but uh, I agree with the else? neighbors and other. Hello? Is that Hello? Just a stenographer? Yes. Did the stenographer want something? Okay. Could you continue, Mike? Mike, you're on mute. Uh, okay. There, how about that? Is that okay. where we are? Yes. Okay. Um, like I said, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I like to see development, but I also like to see uh, the growth uh, done correctly. And when the developer says that uh, uh, the cost is his main reason for having 13 units, I would, uh, after 50 years of construction experience and and being around enough to know that New York City, New Jersey City costs of construction are considerably higher than Erie PA. You can tell that by his motion that the rents were a lot cheaper. I would like to see maybe that type of thing be a condo or somewhere where owner occupancy is part of the deal because um, if you have any skin in the game, you're going to take care of something. 
if you don't have any skin in the game, you move in and out. And then they said there was going to be a high-end population. And the thing about the high-end population is they do have two or three cars, and there isn't enough parking. So I don't feel comfortable doing this, and I'm not going to, so I say no to the, the, the variance. I just want to let you all know that the stenographer seems to have had uh, some technical issues and has left the meeting. She left. Did I hear you right? By no fault of her own. I think she had some technical issues. Thanks for pointing that out. Don and Jake, I believe we have a problem. We could still use the uh, the, the live Facebook for uh, uh, record, right? Well, like we did the last time. I'm also recording it as well. Okay. Okay. One of those will have to become an official record. Why, why don't we finish the vote and then uh, we'll briefly discuss uh, the the stenographer situation after. Well, I, I want to ensure that there is a recording and that, that if someone wants to appeal, we, they have every right to see the record as it's, as it stood. Continue with the board members vote. If you, you didn't get me, this, this is Mike Gorniak. I voted no. Yes, sir. Jake, you're muted. Jake's muted. Thank you, Jake. Gotcha. That was a no vote, Mr. Horniak. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Johnson, how do you vote? I approve. Ms. King, how do you vote? I vote yes. Mr. Dawson? I am with uh, Mike. Um, I believe that I was down there and I come through there f frequently. What concerns me is the safety of the people in case of emergency and then also the issue about snow removal and uh, what happens there. Um, I'm quite alarmed with so many people uh, having access to such a small area in the town, uh, in that section of the town. Um, a smaller number of units may be more appropriate in the future uh, if, if you can afford or can see that through. So I vote no. Okay, we have a uh, two to two vote, which is a uh, tie is considered a denial of the appeal. May I very briefly um... Ed, I, I agree 100% with what you said a moment ago. All I was going to suggest was that Frank's uh, taping will make that the official record in lieu of a, uh, of a written stenographer since we know the, uh, the source. We, we can guarantee that the, the source is a, a city employee you know, who's recording it and uh, rather than Facebook, which could be compromised. Th that's all I was gonna say there. Um, and of course, if the stenographer comes back, gets the uh, um, technical issues uh, settled, then I guess we won't have that, that problem. But that's all I meant by that. I agree with you 100% about having the record. Thank you. Next, uh, please declare. Can I ask a question? Uh, Jake, please declare the vote. I, I stated that it was a two to two vote, which is a tie vote is considered a denial. Okay. Next. Next on the agenda is appeal number 12-230 by PE Real Estate Holdings, LLC, concerning property located at 824-828 West 2nd Street, 
the appellant is seeking a dimensional variance to construct a 12 unit, three story, multiple family dwelling. Per section 20511 of the city zoning ordinance, the required front yard setback must be the average depth of the existing structures located between two intersecting streets, plus or minus five feet. The front yard average is seven feet, 62 feet is proposed. Mr. Jesuit, I believe, is here to present that project as well. Would you state your name and have you been sworn in? Name and address. Can you, Drake, can you give me the name again? I'm looking for him. Philip Jesuit. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I was on, I was on mute. My name is Philip Jesuit. My address is One Worth Street, New York, New York. Have you been sworn in? Uh, yes, I have. Proceed. Okay, so um, this application is for uh, the development of a similarly deep, um, similarly narrow lot, although this one um, is 73 feet wide by approximately 160 feet deep. Um, the request here is also a front yard variance, but not a side yard variance. And the purpose is to construct a 12 unit apartment building um, again, with a uh, number of the units facing the bay and uh, fronting essentially on um, Front Street, which is at the rear end of the lot. It is a through block lot that goes from second to uh, the adjacent area of Front Street, edge, edge of Front Street. Um, this is uh, a three story building. Um, it has similar. Um, design and similar concept to 946 West 2nd Street. And, um, but uh, unlike the other lot, it is uh, about 22 feet wider, so can accommodate three full units of frontage, so does not require a side yard setback. Um, I'd like to point out that the subject of 946's request and the subject of this request is strictly a dimensional variance. It is not a unit variance or a parking variance or anything else. Um, the height, the unit count, the parking count is all as per your code. And the only um, item that um, I am asking for um, a variance on is the uh, uh, dimensional variance from Second Street. And that is due to the fact that this is a through lot and the property is unable to um, get material lake views without uh, being situated towards the um, other end of the lot and really fronting on Front Street. Is there anyone in favor or opposed that needs to be sworn in? Is there anyone in favor or opposed that needs to be sworn in? If not, if you choose to speak, please say your name first so you may be acknowledged. Sorry, I'm on 230 West. I'm sorry, 230 Liberty. Whoa, whoa. Somebody help me. Ms. Manella, I think that you're. So Am I echoing again? Yes. I apologize. So again, now we're looking at changing a height variance. And other investors on Second Street had built their apartments up so that people could have view also. So we're changing 
again, all of the concepts for not long-term residents. And I thought the plan for the West Bayfront expansively as they're doing the East Bayfront is to bring in income tax money, income tax payers, to have a neighborhood that does consist of this high rise type of building that doesn't fit into what we're looking at long term. The only thing we see to want to develop is apartments and not develop a community. And being part of the West Bayfront group, I want community. We've got so many people to purchase homes. And if you put it on these 13 units, you're raising them that high. I walk that way every day. You're changing the cosmetic look of the neighborhood, not to mention the traffic that you're creating again. If you were building one or two houses on that property, which would be beautiful, or a two unit place that is um, not far on the same side of that street, there, there are different developments you can use that property for. So I, I apologize to Mr. Guzik, very polite, but I think this is just a money maker and not a neighborhood maker. You're not creating a neighborhood. And that's all I have for right now. Just for a point of clarification, Jake, is this zone high density? This is about the height. You're muted, Jake. Jake's muted. Thank you. In a waterfront residential district, there are several uses. There are, they all fall under the conditional use categories. But as far as dwelling units permitted, you can have one family dwellings, two family dwellings, and multiple family dwellings. So there is no limit on the number of dwellings that can be planned for a waterfront residential district other than the restriction that you cannot, you can only have one dwelling unit per 1,000 square feet of lot area. That's important. Thank you. Any other to testify? Anyone to testify for or against? Alan Monchin. L, would you, L Monchin? Would you state your name and give your address, please? And have you been sworn in? You may have to unmute yourself, Alan. Wow. How does someone get Alan to unmute himself? Uh, Alan, there's a microphone button at the lower left-hand side of your screen. It will have a red line through it. If you click it, it will no longer have a red line through it, and it should be green, and then you can speak. Alan, you may speak. Yeah, you should be able to speak now. Is there anyone else who chooses to speak? Please Carrie, unmute yourself. Carrie DeChurch. Please unmute yourself, Carrie. Identif 
Give your name and address. My name is Carrie D. Church, and I live at 108 Plum Street. <clears throat> and I have been sworn in. Thank you. So I do have some a couple concerns. He wants to move the building further north um, for better views. I'm not quite sure they're aware that um, the Port Authority commissioned a study <clears throat> completed by Dahl Kemper Landscaping that states that bluff is unstable. <clears throat> Therefore, no trees can be brought down from that, that bluff. No vegetation can be removed. In fact, just recently, within the last month, they've stopped mowing a portion of that flat part of the what they were going to make the promenade. Um, so that's one point. So those trees are going to do nothing but grow down there. Um, the other thing <clears throat> is there is the Port Authority required um, the previous owner, one of the previous owners, to replant two maple trees because they illegally cut down trees before they were about to build. So there's two large maple trees that are gonna to continue to grow on that Port Authority property that is being used to stabilize that bank. So that's one thing, because the, the community has come together and we've asked for that vegetation to be cut down so that we can have a view. And we, we have been told no, that that's not possible. So that's my one issue. Um, there are houses and apartments the entire way down um, West 2nd Street that have a view that are right on 2nd Street. I, I'm not sure why it has to be so much placed so much forward, forward north to have a view. Um, my other concern is drainage. One of the previous owners put in a cement retaining wall. What's gonna happen if water runs off those roofs and, and degradates the, the, the land behind those retaining walls? Um, parking is another issue with this area. You know, we, we have limited parking now because multiple um, of these houses are, are two and three people uh, rental units that each have one and two cars. So there's a lot of concerns um, that are kind of adjacent to the, the other property. Um, the other issue I have with it is the actual design of the building. That The design of the building does not fit remotely in this neighborhood. Um, it looks like a, an industrial warehouse. And although it might be neat and, and trendy for somebody from New York City, but from Erie, it doesn't add to the neighborhood whatsoever. I, th I think it's going to be an eyesore. And um, thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else, please? Alan, we're going to try you again. He's muted. He is. To the administrator can't override the mute. Not on, uh, so if they mute themselves, I cannot. If I mute them, I can. Alan, I'm gonna let you work out. I'll, I'll leave you in the room and hopefully we hear you at some point. Um, Janet Ferguson. Muted. Hmm. Janet, you're, you're, you're muted. I hope you can hear me. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, uh, Mark Gusick. Apparently, just being on mute is the issue today. There you go, Mark. Nope, you're muted again. Try one more time. There you go. Now I'm. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. I I was just gonna lower my hand. I I. I think I hit the wrong button. That's all. Okay. Anyone else that would like to speak in favor or against? Yeah, we have about eight more and uh, Brian Weber's up next. Okay. This is Brian Weber, Weber Murphy Fox. I was previously sworn in. Um, so I think it's worth mentioning again, uh, similar to the 946 um, one that we spoke about previously, that all we're looking at here is a, is a variance to allow the building to be pushed back. It's still within all of the setbacks 
that are allowed by code. We're just pushing it further away from the street. There's nothing in the zoning or code that would stop anyone from building to the back. We're simply asking for a little bit more room in front. We're still within the lot setbacks. I want to clarify, we are within the zoning use. We are within the zoning density. We are lower than the allowed zoning height. We have the allowed zoning uh, parking count. We have the allowed height and density and everything else. So although I understand people's concerns, we are following the zoning ordinance that the city put in place. And all we're simply asking for is whether or not the building can be pushed back. The other thing I wanna mention is that this building did go through design review as well as 946 and it was approved by the design review board. So I wanted to just clarify those things for folks. Thank you. Thank you. Lori Thompson Edwards. I was unmuted. Hi, this is Lori. Please state your name and your address and have you been sworn in? Yes, I have. My right. name is L Lori Edwards. I live at 111 Plum Street. The property in question is behind my property and um, my family has lived here all their lives. I inherited this house. My grandfather had built it. As far as um, views are concerned, the, the uh, construction of this building would obstruct my view of the bluff that I originally had. Uh, according to your zoning section, 306.20, part of it states unity of character and design harmonious whole. Also 306.4, scale relative to its neighbors and adjacent properties, whereas bluff views will be preserved. I also have a question about the height of the building. It states that it's 43 feet high from the curb. The curb on 2nd Street is six feet lower than the lot itself. It goes up on an incline like a 45. Originally, there were two houses sitting side by side in those lots and they had the whole backyard. The original owner or whoever owned it at the time brought in extra dirt to raise their yard up. But I was wondering where the 43 feet comes from, above the six feet or at the curb level because there is no curb on Front Street. And as far as um, looking at the presentation drawings, the perspective from the north is very misleading. The house that is on Front Street North, which is Jan Ferguson, her house is drawn at one story high, which we, it is in fact the case. Um, I do believe that the uh, the objectives of the zoning that the 108.10 that it has to be compatible and harmonious. The the T111 and the metal clad panels have never been used in this area. They were used down below where there's industry for ships. This building looks like a blob pole barn, and I don't believe it'll bring aesthetics to our neighborhood. That is all I want to say. Ms. Thompson, can I ask you to repeat the, uh, the um, code, uh, the portion of the code that you, uh, that you quoted at the beginning of your comments? Um, 
What section? Three hundred six point two zero. Unity I, of character and design, harmonious. I apologize, ma'am. I, I spoke over. What would you say? Three hundred six point two zero. Unity of character and design as a harmonious whole. Thank you. And also three hundred six point four zero. Scale relative to its neighborhood and adjacent properties. Meaning, if the building was lined up with the other ones on Second Street, that would be great. I don't understand why you got to plop a building with one of the windows that's going to be looking right into my bathroom window. Thank you, ma'am. You ruined. And why should my view be disturbed because you want to put an apartment building up that I've had for? My grandfather built this house in 1900. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question for Jake, please. On this. Okay, will you proceed? Yes, okay, so 306.20 um, talks about the unification of character and design, but then in 306.21, it further elaborates and says building or structures located along strips of land or on single sites and not part of a unified multi-building complex shall strive to achieve visual harmony with the surroundings. This particular um, proposed design would be part of a multi-building complex, correct? Uh, no. No, it's actually a standalone building. It's not part of a larger complex. Okay. So they would still have to just show their design and construction and it has to be appropriate to the city. Jake. I, I, that's just a comment. I don't have any comment on that opinion. Okay, yeah, I was just reading it out of our code book, 306.21, just to, just so right. we know what we're working with. Because I know when the, when right. the 306.20 was just quoted, it was, mis it was misquoted. And so I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Yes, correct. That, that does refer to multi-building complexes that the buildings within that multi-building complex should be harmonious with each other. Okay. It's not necessarily suggesting that, it, that the design be similar to the designs of neighboring properties. Okay, thank you. I'll point out that distinction in the in the report. Thanks for bringing that to attention. Any others? I have a question. I don't I, know. Who, I don't know who that is. Could you? My name is Leslie Alexander. Okay. I've spoken previously. My address is eight two zero West Second Street. I actually rent in a property that was constructed by Carol Bianchi's family. And I've been here for a number of years. I appreciate that there are rigid zoning regulations. However, I'm sure these regulations were written outside of a global pandemic. And I'm curious to know how the committee feels about introducing 12 units. So quite possibly um, well more than 12 individuals, but more likely in the region of 24 plus individuals into a relatively small space. For a number of months, we've been hearing that indeed social distancing need continue, that we don't see an end to the health crisis that we're all facing. I really don't understand how introducing a 12 unit development on a residential area where, as Lori has suggested, it would obstruct her view that's likely to impinge on her quality of life, where the rough runoff from heavy rains and snows may likely affect the adjacent properties. I'd like to know how our general health is being safeguarded by these zoning regulations at this time.
Jake, you may respond if you'd like to, but. I mean, for the purposes of this variance request, really the, you know, we should be focusing on the variance that's being requested. It's not the board's purview to question the zoning regulations themselves. Thank you. Chuck Nelson. Chuck Nelson, you. please identify yes. yourself and address. Chuck Nelson, 646 West 9th Street. Um, as I believe it was uh, Mr. Weber had pointed out, you know, this is a matter of one single variance about where it is between 2nd Street and Front Street. But this isn't a case of where, uh, where you're discussing a two lot garage and that the neighbors have been checked in within the variance is so simple. This is a matter that's going to change the, the very structure of that neighborhood. Uh, even if it fits within the parameters of the zoning, I, I want it to be noted that the people speaking out are people that are neighbors to that community and a, and a community that's generally not well represented in our city. Uh, and that the people speaking in favor of it are people that are not a part of our community. Uh, when, when we look at situations like this, I think it's, it's worth putting um, you know, our, our Jersey City developer to, to hold him to, to a much higher standard than what we hold um, our garage buddy that's lived in the neighborhood for 20 years, um, the standard we hold him to. So with this not fitting our, you know, a lot of our comprehensive plans as to, um, as to right sizing the housing stock, is it as it fits to owner occupancy issues. There's no reason to offer this guy any, any leniency as to let him off the letter of the law. If, if they would like to be able to fit in a 12 unit spot, don't, don't, make, them, don't make them encroach on Lori's view. And, and I, I think that's where the neighborhood needs to be defended and protected by this board. I thank you for your time and your serving. Anyone else to speak? I'd hope you'd introduce new points of view that have already not been expressed. Anyone to speak? Robert Sprickman. Unmute. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Robert Sprickman. I live at 111 Plum Street. I have not been sworn in. Do you want to swear me in? Okay, Jake. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. All right. I walked the block the other day, and uh, my cousin Mary used to live at eight, or excuse me, 802 West 2nd, which is the first house at Liberty. I walked the, the block, and there are seven houses. And as Jake had said earlier, they're, they're averaging seven feet back. Um, in those houses, I estimate there's probably 24 people. And this building that you're, uh, that somebody wants to build here would uh, ostensibly double our population um, with only 12 parking places. And uh, so I'm not gonna go into the parking. Um, the, the issue I believe is the setback. And if it wasn't set back, it would be harmonious with this traditional neighborhood. Well, not necessarily that building, but the idea of a building. Uh, as it would sit now, if you push it back 62.9 feet, as they request, it would block or ellipse, as that gentleman had used earlier in the day here, my view of the bay, it would block my morning sun until at least 11 o'clock. It would block any cooling breezes and I get over the air broadcast TV and it would wipe out my TV reception, reception, reception. It's three stories tall, for God's sake. It's two stories above me. So uh, I have to agree uh, with the people that I've been listening to here earlier that it is not to fit in this neighborhood. Thank you very much. Any others to speak? Please state your name so you may be acknowledged. Mark Gusick. Okay, that time I really did raise my hand. <clears throat> um, I, I do have a question on this, um, and that is, if the board is going to seriously consider and actually approve this particular appeal, 
Uh, I'm wondering if they're going to take up the question, uh, if they're able to retake the question on 12.229, um, because it, 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 it appears that these things are, that, that are being asked for by the developer in both cases are simply dimensional in nature and everything else is within the approved use of zoning and approved by the planning commission. So if this particular one gets approved, um, I'm wondering if they're able to retake the question for the appeal because it seemed in the appeal of 12229, um, it was about safety and congestion issues with the entire idea of building this building and not necessarily the, um, the dimensional issues that were brought to the board. So my question is, is if this one is approved, will the, will the question be retaken for appeal 12229? Well, let me be clear. We're asking you for testimony instead of you asking us for our interpretation of things at this time. So if you have something to add to the testimony, please state it or something to take away. Is there anyone else to speak in favor or oppose? Philip uh, Goose, Mr. Chairman, want to speak? Made a mention in the chat, Philip. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I, I only wanted to point out that um, I just had one non-zoning. I mean, this has been brought up a couple times now, but it was not brought up in 946. I had raised my hand to bring up the point. Um, this, this really, uh, as I understood it, the zoning board was to hear my variance request, and it appears that 946 was um, disapproved because of density and parking, which were both done pursuant to code, exactly to the letter of the law. The only, um, the only variance request there was a dimensional variance request, and it's the same thing at this property. So I just wanted to, um, to note that, um, but you know, the design and the unit count and the height and everything else having to do with this is uh, fully within Erie's code. Um, and the only thing that is not is the dimensional variance. I think that each property that the board acts upon is, is done entirely on its own merit and testimony and based on the board's experience. So I'll limit the information that we're talking about to this particular property. Um, so if there's something you'd like to add or addition or to subtract from this property, you may do so. Uh, Chairman, I'm gonna read uh, Janet Ferguson sent a chat. She said this project will negatively impact the neighborhood parking aesthetics damage too dense a project. Neighboring homes will be dwarfed by this three story building. And then she also said, just going through the chat here. Um, she has Zoom on her phone. She tried to get in um, and written comments will have to be considered. And that's all I have on that matter. And then there's one more to be heard. And that is Daria, got to find her here. I have a hand up, I just can't find it. We ever hear from Mr. Monsheen again, Frank? No, Alan was not able to. Uh, he was raising his hand now, but um, Daria is on right now. Okay, thank you. And thank you to Mr. Weber. It's loud and, again, Daria. That's a friend of Dad. Thank you to Mr. Weber, and thank you, Philip. And I don't want to mispronounce your last name. And again, I understand everything else was approved by the board and it is within zoning guidelines, but it is my interpretation that the zoning board is also meant to keep the neighborhood and people who are actually live here and our properties um, valued. I believe that this um, complex that you're talking about, again, could be made into a single family home or two family home. Again, you're trying to change the 
cosmetic makeup, the atmosphere of the neighborhood. I think the zoning board has traditionally in the city area, and no offense, gentlemen and Selena, um, fallen for these changing these experiences and experiences and not thought about the neighbors. I have been in this house before there was a Bayfront Highway. I bought my house because of the neighborhood. And we watched everything change and be approved. The cobblestone, I hired my own attorney from um, Philadelphia to fight Tom Kennedy when he wanted to build a Class A office space where the cobblestone is. That was um, after Jeff Galt had sold him that property. We won that um, through city council. I think city council and the zoning board have to look at the neighborhoods and what you're contributing to this neighborhood. Again, I understand Mr. Weber's point, and Philip, I don't want to mispronounce your last name again, but this does not fit in to what we're trying to achieve through the West Bayfront and, and getting individual people and younger people to live here. And if you're talking about your insurance, you can say your insurance people are going to run at that. Right now, I'm going to tell you that my son works at your insurance and he's probably not going back to the office for a year and a half, as far as he can see. So, I think it's up to the zoning board to look at the neighborhood as it is and invite Philip and Mr. Weber or any other developers to look at it as a residential area. And that we need more than 13 units on each block. Thank you very much. I think we might have Alan. Alan, are you there? Oh, you're here, Alan. Is there anyone either opposed or for this project to be heard? Mr. Chairman, we did receive several communications that I would like to read for okay. everybody's benefit that regarding this appeal. Uh, these were submitted to the city of Erie and should be read into the testimony. Uh, the first is from Mr. Bob Sprickman, who spoke earlier. Uh, so this may be redundant to his oral testimony, but I will read it into the record anyway. Um, from Mr. Sprickman, walking the block, there are seven other homes, approximately 24 people that have buildings beginning within five feet of the sidewalk, traditional homes making up our neighborhood. The developers intend to drop in a warehouse style, three-story aluminum 12 unit apartment building that will double our population, seriously impact the on-street parking, increase and hamper the traffic flow, and remove any sense of community that we have fostered. This warehouse moved back 63 feet from the curb will block my view. Any eastern breeze, my morning sunshine, and ruin my TV per reception. The entrance door would be within 12 feet of my only window on the east side. Why allow something so foreign to a traditional neighborhood? Deny the setback. That was submitted Robert Sprickman, 111 Plum Street, Erie, PA. I'll just continue to read the other communications that were received by the city regarding this appeal. Jake, uh, the next one hopefully is Hopefully they will not be a repeat of what someone has already said there. But go right ahead. Um, Thank you. Uh, the next communication is from Jan Ferguson. Um, 
She objects to allowing 12 rental units on this lot. The lot size is too small for this many living spaces and not reasonable. Maximum of nine rental units would be more suitable to the lot size, would not require variances to accomplish proper distancing between proposed building and existing homes. North corner of proposed building looks almost on the lot line. Proposed lot is on West 2nd Street, and that is the front of the lot. The north side of the lot is clearly the back of the lot, but does have a limited view of the water. It will negatively impact on-street parking for neighbors who already have trouble finding on-street parking spots. This may easily add a demand for 24 parking spots to the neighborhood with only 12 off-street parking spots. This math does not factor in guests. There may be drainage issues with the property as evidenced by existing erosion at the north end of the lot and precarious wall on the west side without drainage. Notice that older existing homes are built very close to these lots. Variance to reduce side setbacks would adversely impact existing homes. Industrial look to structures is not conforming to family neighborhood. Maybe something other than metal siding would enhance the building's appearance. The metal may look cheap. The owner argument that the lot is narrow and deep makes it difficult to build 12 units on should be the exact reason why you don't plan a 12 unit project. It is not reasonable to push five pounds of bricks into a two pound lot. Please consider the neighbors who have owned property here since their structure was built. There are two such families out of four who own a family residence next to this project that the property is still in the same family. Submitted from Jan Ferguson. Uh, Jan had some additional comments uh, that I don't think were captured yet. Um, quite a number of neighbors who wish to weigh in on the variance and design request. Um, she comments that uh, she sees that they want a gravel parking lot for 12 cars. Again, I object. The city requires concrete and I have to comply with that ordinance. So a project like should surely not get a pass. Further weeds will grow up in a gravel lot and further detract from our neighborhood. By the end of winter, their gravel will be most likely in the lawns of some of the neighbors given their request for drastically reducing setbacks. Again, I oppose. And we have a letter from Carrie DeChurch. Dear Erie Zoning Board, Regarding the request for variance for the new proposed apartment building, 800 block of West 2nd Street, I'm highly opposed to granting this variance to allow setback of the building. Developer one, developer cites water views detrimental to the success of his rental business. Excuse me. In a recent study commissioned by the Port Authority and completed by Dahl Kepper Landscaping, the hill was deemed unstable and therefore no removal of trees or growth is permitted in this area. The view will only continue to be blocked as trees and vegetation grow. In fact, the Port Authority has ceased mowing more of the grassy area to maintain stability. Therefore, it is no tangible benefit to shifting the building north. Additionally, there are two trees on the Port Authority property between the building and Front Street those trees cannot be removed either. Two, my understanding of the purpose of, for zoning restrictions in neighborhoods is to preserve the value of properties and quality of life for those living in the neighborhood. After reviewing the plans, I cannot see how shifting the monstrous building that far in and allowing them to build that wide will do anything but detract from the neighborhood, box in people's homes, and completely block the little view left of those who have lived there for 10, 20, 30 years. Additionally, the proposed materials resemble a warehouse, not even remotely enhancing the neighborhood. My guess is that these materials are much cheaper than nice vinyl siding or wood. Reviewing the plans, can you really say this building will enhance the neighborhood? And would you want to be a homeowner on the east side of Plum Street? Three, 
there's not enough parking spaces nor street parking to accommodate that size of an apartment building. Is there a recommendation by the zoning board of number of spaces required per bedroom? Please understand we are not against development. We just want it to be reasonable like the condos on Second and Liberty, et cetera. I do not wish to stand in the way of Mrs. Dahlkemper selling her property nor put the Erie City Zoning Board in a precarious position. I do hope the proposed buyer can understand our concerns and alter his building plans. We hope that you listen to the neighbors and respectfully, unbiasedly deny the variance. Thank you for your time. Respectfully, Carrie DeChurch. I have two more. Uh, these are additional comments from Carrie DeChurch. Uh, question, there are properties located just east of Second and Liberty that adhere to the zoning requirements. Why are these economically feasible, but this developer cannot make similar structures economically feasible? Why should we have to deal with all the issues that come with a building that large and set back that far to satisfy his expectations slash desires for ROI with this purchase? How will the runoff from this large building affect the retaining wall west of the property that is up against the houses on Plum Street there are two maple trees planted on Port Authority property to the north. Does the developer realize those trees cannot be removed and will grow very large over the coming years? Uh, I could go on, but I'm sure you will get a long list from others. We appreciate you taking the time to hear us. Respectfully, Carrie DeChurch, our West Bay Front neighborhood member. I have one additional commentary from Leslie Alexander. I welcome your response. There's clear evidence that health status is linked with a host of indicators, not the least of which are education, ethnicity, and income. In the midst of a global pandemic, is it wise to squeeze 12 units into two residential lots? Pre-COVID-19, the West Bayfront demographics included higher unemployment rates as compared to the county the Commonwealth and those reported nationally. In the city of Erie as a whole, 27.4% of people that have been reported as living below the poverty level, that's 21.6% of families and 40.6% of those under the age of 18. Pre-COVID-19, 2.3 people were reported to occupy a single dwelling. With rising unemployment, it is likely that housing density will increase. Social distancing and limiting the sizes of gatherings have been used to control the spread of coronavirus during this pandemic. I am concerned that in the midst of this historic pandemic at a time when positive cases are expanding, at a time when national leaders are warning of an extended outbreak of a second wave of coronavirus and with an approaching flu season that a 12 unit housing complex will compromise the health of residents in our community. Why would the city approve a plan to build a 12 unit facility in the West Bay front area where individuals already contend with a host of health risks? Likely this would bring an influx of between 12 to 24 plus people to what was originally zoned as a double lot. Individuals all living closely together during a pandemic. Indeed, in our population, our zip code risks from chronic respiratory conditions diabetes and nephritis are higher. These pose significant risk factors in the absence of a pandemic. The addition of a 12 unit complex will not bring jar jobs to our community nor improve our health status. We cannot continue development plans and initiatives as we once did and ignore any additional risks these may potentially introduce. Uh, thanks, Leslie, Leslie Alexander. PhD, RH, clinical herbalist and educator. That's the written testimony that was received in our office for this appeal. Members of the board, any comments, questions? I, I do have one important thing I need to ask Mr. Uh, Gessu. Um, 
at the beginning of your um, testimony for this second case, sir, you, um, you indicated that it, it would be similar uh, as the first case, uh, except that the, um, it would be a, a front yard setback at issue instead of the side yard setback. So in crafting my report, uh, can I just paraphrase from your first uh, testimony on the, on the first case that we heard um, as for the reasons uh, why you're requesting the variance or do you have something in particular you'd like to add uh, for me to put in the report with respect to this second case? No, it can be the same. It's just that there's no side yard variance on this one. Thanks. That's all I have. Yeah, I think it's time to call for a vote. Okay. Another member has any questions for Mr. Gessen? I do. I have one, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Gessu, I've heard a lot about the materials um, that you're planning to build. Can you clarify with us what you were planning on building the um, complex with? Uh, a combination of the two different buildings are different, but it's a combination of um, final siding, um, wood, and um, uh, corrugated metal. But basically, the one that's on 946 would be a, uh, uh, a beam, uh, they call it uh, board and batten siding, um, and it would be vinyl siding. And there would also be a uh, charred wood, it's sort of a driftwood um, facade on the front of it. And the other building would be a combination of a similar kind of driftwood um, in combination with a corrugated metal siding and a um, different type of metal um, extruded roof. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I believe we're ready for the vote. If there's no other questions from the board. More questions from Mike Orniak. Okay, we'll Ready. call for the vote. Mr. Horniak, how do you vote? Well, I look at this one a little bit differently. Uh, I, uh, I see the neighbor's concern on stone. Uh, the second thing is, I know we're asking for a, a setback variance. And since the developer and an architect have said that uh, <clears throat> it would fit if the setback wasn't available. So I think that the reef, you could reconfigure the building possibly without the same amount of units to fit here without coming to the board for a variance. I'm gonna say no to this. Mr. Johnson. He's muted. Jeff Johnson, you're you're muted. Thank you. I'm here. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this this property is owned by Dan and Kathy Dahlkemper. Is that a true statement? Correct. Okay. Uh, just for transparency's sakes. And number two, even if this if this is denied. If this variance is denied, these these people can go ahead and still build that building w with uh, without the without the change in the setback. Am I correct? You there? Jake's there. Is that a question for me, Jeff? Yeah, anybody. Yeah, you, Jake. I, I mean, that they're, I, I think that the developer answered the questions as far as the alternatives to, to building on that property. So, but they, if, had they not requested this variance, they could have built that building. Am I correct? 
Well, they if they may if they meet all the lot yard and height requirements, then they then yes, they would not be in front of the board. They would simply be going through the conditional use approval process because it is in a waterfront district. Okay. I'm going to deny it. Ms. King? Um, first, I'd just like to address a comment that was made, I believe, by Daria about um, our board members not caring about the neighborhoods. Um, I've been on this board now for six years, and I will say that we have one of the most dedicated board um, who cares about this neighborhood, and not just the neighborhood, but also care about the city of Erie as a whole. So we take every case very seriously. We spend a lot of time outside of what you see right here, researching and driving around properties. And so um, I would just like to make that very clear. So when our decisions are made, we are thinking about the entire picture, about the direction of our city, um, the future of it, and um, the possibilities that are available. And so um, my official vote though, is I'm going to vote yes on this property. Mr. Dawson? I want to understand to be sure, Jake, that uh, what Jeff stated was that the, it could be built um, without requiring the board's intervention if they did not request a setback. And it was restated several times over that it is zoned for such and that um the the uh issue about side yards and so forth is not the same as the other it's a much wider property um i'm going to vote yes okay we have a uh two two votes in favor two against that's a tie vote it's considered a denial of the appeal Next, I'd like to move along, you're moving. And for those who are going to testify in the future here, if something has already been stated, please uh, let's not restate it three or four times or read it four or five times. Um, so those who are prepared to uh, come before us, would you please state your name and in your address. Jake, we're ready for the next. Okay, next up we have appeal number 12-231 by Eric Muller concerning property located at 3304 Liberty Street. The appellant is seeking a use variance to operate a tattoo parlor in an R1A zoning district. Per section 204.11 of the city zoning ordinance, tattoo parlors are not a permitted use in an R1A district. Persons to speak in favor, please identify yourself. All Eric right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Name and address. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Eric Mueller. Um, I am a resident of the city here. I live at 929 West 7th Street. Um, and I am a professional tattoo artist. I've been operating here in the city. Uh, for the past eight years, um, I've worked at multiple studios in the area. Eric, have yes. you been sworn in yet? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I have not. All right. You, you prepared to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right. Proceed. Okay. Um, uh, members of the board, uh, I would like to thank you for your time and hearing this appeal. Uh, again, I said my name is uh, Eric Mueller. I am a professional artist here in the city, and we are applying here for a use variance uh, for the property at 3304 Liberty. Um, basically, what we were trying to do, myself uh, and the team of tattooers uh, that I plan to bring along with me, uh, is open a, a fully functioning high-end tattoo studio uh, at this particular property. Uh, as it stands now, uh, this property 
uh, has been uh, a commercial based property. There have been multiple businesses in it um, previously. Um, and um, the, the building itself is move in ready. Uh, we would require basically no changes to the physical structure. Um, it is uh, already uh, completely renovated. Uh, more or less, uh, it's just uh, relying on the, uh, the, the board's approval for us to just move in and start almost immediately uh, doing what we had already been doing, uh, operating as professional tattooers in this particular neighborhood. Um, it, I believe it is of note uh, that as far as uh, impact on the community uh, and in terms of having a tattoo studio in this location, um, it should be worth mentioning that, uh, you know, merely, I want to say three blocks up the street, uh, there is already a functioning tattoo studio in the area. Um, so in terms of there being a, a negative impact on, on the neighborhood, I believe that it would be negligible. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty much uh, just hoping that uh, we can help to elevate the, uh, the, the notion of what a, a tattoo studio uh, is and will function to be. Um, myself uh, and, and the other uh, artists that I have with me, uh, we are multiple year veterans of the industry. Uh, we hold ourselves to extremely high standards, uh, both in terms of the art that we produce, uh, the interactions with our clientele, uh, who we maintain personally, uh, as well as um, maintaining the highest standards for cleanliness and all compliance with the, uh, the health department uh, and, and everything that they require. Uh, so uh, as far as uh, identifying a, a hardship uh, in terms of why we would need this particular variance, uh, I'd like to bring the attention to um, some of the, the previous properties that I had uh, uh, taken interest in. Um, particularly ones that were more in line with the typical um, uh, typical use uh, as far as uh, tattoo shops being zoned for C2 as opposed to the R1A that this particular property is. Um, a lot of those C2 properties, you know, whether they are in um, you know, small strip malls or shopping centers or things like that that are typically um, identified as being appropriate for a tattoo shop, um, one of the main problems that we have run into as a lot of the surrounding businesses have written into their lease agreements uh, that they, they cannot have certain types of businesses uh, in the adjacent properties. Uh, we were looking at a property that was on, uh, I believe it was West 8th Street, uh, where we ran into that same issue. Um, the positive thing with this particular property on Liberty Street, not only is it in the neighborhood that you know, we already operate in, uh, myself and, and, and my associates, it, uh, it is a standalone building. It, you know, there, there are no uh, problems with you know, adjacent properties, leases, and, and things like that. Um, it, the, the surrounding area, uh, directly across the street, there is a small strip mall that's uh, all commercial use. Um, further south up Liberty, you know, it's pretty much more of the same, you know, all commercial. Um, so it's pretty much all I have as far as um, you know, the, the, the issues that we're running into. Um, Is there anyone else to speak in favor of? Is there anyone else to speak in favor of the proposal? Appeal? Anyone speak against the appeal? I uh, don't know if he's a for or against, but Jack Saluski? Uh, that would be the property owner, I believe. Jack Saluski. Saluski, looks like. Saluski. Okay, thank you. Yes, my name is Jack Saluski, 4114 Elliott Road in Erie. And uh, I am the uh, property owner of 3304 Liberty Street. And I, I'm sorry? Have you been sworn in, sir? I did earlier, yes. Okay, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. I just want to make a couple of comments that uh, when we purchased this property, it was back in 1988, and converted it to a commercial building, 
it was rezoned for commercial. It was originally a TV service and repair shop, and it con uh, continued in that purpose for probably 15 years. And then following that, we had an ice cream shop in there, and then most recently a cheese and sausage shop. So the property has been a commercial property since 1988. So, uh, in my opinion, there should not be any concern about putting another business in there. Uh, and as Mr. Mueller has stated, you know, they comply with everything that you need as far as regulations and everything. And they fit in a commercial establishment, I, as far as I can tell, with no issues. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Anyone else to speak for or against this proposed? You want to speak in favor for or against this proposed? Daria, Chairman. I'd like to speak for. This is Daria Marnella. All right, state your name and address. Daria Marnella, 230 Liberty, and I've already been sworn in. And um, I am familiar with this particular artist, tattoo um, artist, and his character. And I have no problem with him starting his, his business. I'm also familiar with the um, owner of that property that has been well maintained. And I think that um, he will continue to maintain that um, property the way that it's been for the past, I don't, I, I don't remember how, what year he said he bought it, but I am familiar with both of these people. And I think that this is not a problem in our area at all. Thank you. Anyone else in favor or against? Anyone else in favor or against? Board members, any questions? I, I, I'll promise to be brief. I just want to make sure I get a couple things accurate for the report. Mr. Mueller, um, actually, before Mr. Seleski said it, I thought you were talking about that building on the east side of Liberty where the blood, uh, where the ACL lab is, but I know exactly the building you're talking about, the old ice cream shop. Um, yes. So you, you said that... Uh, no changes needed to be made to the building, and um, it's it's already been uh, uh, in use. Uh, did, was was I mistaken there? Have you been using the property? I, I guess I I didn't get all of I, your remarks are inconsistent the way I wrote them down. I want to make sure I have this accurate. Have you been working out of this uh, property, and you're just getting approval now, or or um, no, sir. What uh, did you make the changes already? Can you just summarize very quickly? Because again, my notes are a little inconsistent. I want to make sure I get it right. Okay. Um, just to clarify, um, no, we are not currently existing you or just, operating just in the building. Summarize. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last of that. No, I just said you can just summarize. You don't have to go over everything you testified. Just summarize, okay. please. Um, okay, uh, just to summarize, we are not uh, operating out of that building. Um, we currently operate over uh, at a different studio. Uh, I'm currently uh, working out of Midtown Tattoo. Um, the building itself uh, has already been renovated by the owners. Um, that's that's pretty pretty much it. Um, by no, the owners. Okay, Midtown. Yeah. Is that the one over on Poplar Street? Yes. So you're just looking to move from Poplar Street to Liberty? Yes. Okay, now I got it. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Elena? Um, hi, Eric. What would your hours of operation be? Um, the proposed operational hours uh, that we're looking at right now would be um, Tuesday through Saturday, uh, roughly 11 to 7, uh, all of those days, and then closed on Sundays and Mondays. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Any other questions from the board? Jake, we prepare for the vote. Uh, Mr. Chairman, prior to the vote, we did receive one communication uh, regarding this appeal. Uh, it was a letter received in our office. Uh, I'll, I'll read, the le read the letter into the record. Okay. Two, two, City of Erie Zoning Board, 
regarding 3304 Liberty Street, 16508, uh, no to rezone property. I and six other property owners in the neighborhood can't feel there are any reason to justify a hardship to change zoning. Across the street, that is sufficient for this residential area. Just blocks away, South has already located a tattoo artist. We six are united, no change should be made. Thank you, Carl Schneider. Uh, signature. And that's from Mr. and Mrs. Carl Schneider, 938 West 33rd Street. You stated that's all I have. six persons. So there's not six persons names nor six person signature. Uh, no, there don't, there don't appear to be any additional signatures uh, other than from the Mr. and Mrs. Schneider at 938 West 33rd. Okay. What are we prepared to vote? I'm ready. Yes. Jake? Okay, well, we have a call for the vote. Um, Mr. Horniak, how do you vote? Uh, we've given a, a, a variance, not a change again. We have to make that very clear. We've given a variance for a tattoo shop over, uh, I think it's on Peach Street. Uh, there's going to be one uh, new one there. There's going to be one, th there's Midtown, which is up on Poplar. Uh, there's a prolification of tattoo parlors around, it looks like, in that area. But uh, I, I don't see no, any reason to uh, deny this one. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, can't say that it's going to make it or not, and that's not my uh, that's not my job here. But I'm going to say uh, I approve it. Mr. Johnson, I approve. Miss King, um, first, Eric, thank you for wanting to stay in the city to um, conduct your business. We appreciate that, and I wish you the best of luck on this endeavor. And I vote yes. Thank you. Mr. Dawson? I vote yes. Okay, we have four, four votes in favor and none against. The appeal is approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Frank, did we ever hear back from the stenographer? No. I was in communication was with uh, with Sergeant's court reporting. They were attempting to log back in. Um, I, I think that they were able to log back in by phone, but I'm not absolutely certain of that. I see uh, I see a number which is a 814-756-4982 that, has, that uh, hasn't been identified. I'm not sure whether that's the stenographer's number or not. I brought them in the room if they want to speak and see who they are. Could you please identify yourself, uh, the caller from four, from Seven five six four nine eight two. Well, hopefully, if there are no further uh, uh, appeals, then then we call for the conclusion of this meeting. I move to adjourn. Thank I you. It. Properly moved and second. The, the hearing board will be adjourned to the next regular meeting of September. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good. Being patient and good job.